Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I am beyond excited to talk to Joshua Tongle. Joshua Tongle has a fantastic YouTube channel. If you check it out, he talks about everything from out of body experiences to the law of attraction to Neville Goddard. And beyond that, he's a magnificent writer. He's written two incredible books, The Secret to Awesomeness and So You Thought You Knew, that just resounded with me. They're super fantastic. He's my soul brother. In every way, he matches all the things that I've talked about on this channel. When I was re reading his book, it was like uh, he covered all the things that we've talked about. And even using similar language, it's like uh, it's like we've we've met before or something. I, I I had to talk to Joshua. So thank you all the way from the Philippines. How's it going, man? Yeah, awesome, dude. It's good. Yeah, just chilling out here. It's almost midnight, um, but I'm excited to be on your show, dude. Appreciate it, Brian. Well, thanks for coming on. It's it's seven in the morning here, so yeah, I know. Yeah, thanks for so, doing that for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's early for me, late for you, but it's all good, man. The, yeah. it, we're all here, so um, it's awesome. it's it's always fun to talk to some to somebody else that's been on the journey and clearly gone through some of the ups and downs and kind of tested out reality in so many different ways and come up yeah. with your own experiences and philosophies around how this the universe works <clears throat> and to see right. somebody that's kind of um had the same journey as mine is it's exciting uh because you've yeah. learned it's almost like you're you're you're, you're like a future version of me so i, I, gotta, <laughs> I gotta talk to you and you get out a little darker <laughs> <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> cool cool so um yeah um so it's interesting um so the, the the book i was reading uh, um so you thought you knew talks about your yeah. your spiritual journey. Uh, yeah. You you used to be a pastor, a youth yeah. minister. Is that correct? And uh, so yeah. and 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 I and I I'm with that all the way. And so there's a yeah. culture that comes about, and the way that you're taught about God. What what I found interesting is, as I've kind of researched you, you wrote that book, and it's kind of like a summary, like of what Neville Goddard is saying. Before you really started talking about Neville Goddard, it was like right. you basically summarized Neville Goddard before you had started reading Neville Goddard. Am I right? right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know Neville Goddard. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm listening yeah. to this going, and I looked at the date, <laughs> and then I looked at your other videos, and it was like you were basically Neville Goddard before you had actually <laughs> all the knowledge and information. You're saying all the things that Neville Goddard is. So talk That's to me awesome. a little bit about that, the beginning part of your journey. Obviously, you went through a transformation then. So let, let's talk about that first. Yeah. You want it like in the details or you just want like a broad Whatever you want, man. Everything. Just tell me the story and then, you know, we'll okay. go from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, as you read in the book, I was raised in a Christian home. And if you're able to kind of identify a little bit of my journey, you know that there are more than one type of like Christianity. There's many types of Christianity, right. even though we just say, are you Christian? It's like, yeah, well, what kind, right? So I was actually part of, what you would call the charismatic kind of Christianity, meaning that I was, we were the kind of Christians that believed in what's called the supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit. So we weren't like the conservative types of Christians who said that all of that miraculous stuff ceased uh, when the Bible was completed or it was only there during Jesus' time. But actually mm -hmm. our branch actually believed that all that stuff still continued today. So I grew up in that culture, which some people would say is kind of extreme because we saw some weird stuff or what some people would identify as weird where I mean, it wasn't just things like people speaking in tongues or prophesying, mm -hmm. you know, foretelling the future. Um, but I mean, I was part of the culture, which was like what would be called a revival movement, where I would see people having Holy Ghost laughter. It's like uncontrollable laughter. It was a phenomenon that was going right. on, especially in the 90s. I saw people falling down left and right. That was like called slain in the spirit. That's happened to me. People having open heaven visions and going to heaven and traveling in the spirit. Like, right. you know, we, we wouldn't use the term out of body experiences at the time. We call it you know being in the spirit <laughs> you right. know and meeting Jesus and all that kind of stuff and so that was my that was really my culture it was actually kind of normal for me so we'd have all these like famous people from Africa Korea you know claiming to do these miraculous things and have these powers you know because of their relationship with Jesus and at that time you know ever since I was a kid Brian I was always interested surprisingly it's like I was always interested in near-death experiences and because yeah. my mom used to just tell me a lot of stories about it of people you know going to heaven and meeting Jesus and being parts of, you know, being in certain environments that were just very different from this world here. You know, it's like they'll, they'll be in like a environment where like things like, like they could see close details of nature or they'll be in a home and the, the furniture moves. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, just like very right. weird stuff that just doesn't seem 
normal or realistic, so to speak. And I really ate that up because I was just like, wow, that's really cool. And they met Jesus. And like, I would, I would really want to have those kinds of experiences. I just don't want like the near death part, you know, but like the, right. the other stuff is like really cool. But I, at the same time, when I was a kid, since I was so open to, I guess you could say like spiritual things, I did see some stuff as a kid, you know, I like just try to, I'm just going to condense everything. But I did see things like in my room, I would see like a ghost or whatever floating up in the corner of my room. I had other yeah. weird paranormal, you could call it paranormal phenomena happening to me that was just for many years, I didn't know how to explain, you know, just like things moving in the house and stuff. And, um, but I guess one of the things that was the biggest part for me in my journey, which you read in my, uh, my second book was about my hand, right? So I was born this right. way. I was born with only one hand. And so when you look at it with the perspective that I had being born like this, I was teased a lot, which is pretty mm -hmm. sad. Like it's just whack. You don't wish it on any kid, but I was right. teased a lot. And because of that, unfortunately, it got to me, right? And I got very insecure and mm -hmm. just like, oh, dude, you know, no one's going to like girls don't like me or whatever, <laughs> you know? And, um, but within my, my world was this God who supposedly does miracles, right? So, I mean, if he could part the seas, give deaf, you know, um, give hearing to the deaf or sight to the blind, why can't he give me fingers? Cause I'm like, Oh God, Jesus, I'm hurting. Kids are making fun of me. Can you give me two hands? And I would like cry, like pray every night, hoping, Hey, when yeah. I wake up, I'm going to have two hands. I mean, I really did that for many, many years as a, as a kid. Of course. And so I would go to all these different crusades. And of course, a lot of people are like, Josh, who cares? It's not a big deal. You know, and I'm like, yeah, I get it. But this is my experience. I was really hurt as a kid. And I wanted to have, you know, like normal hand. You know, I just had a hard time yeah. accepting it. And I would go to all these different types of faith healers at the time, like the big names. <laughs> you know, just to let you know, I'm from California too. So right, you know, right. I'm from LA. And so, um, yeah, I, I went to all these crusades. I would try to get healed and nothing would happen. And so that was like a really big struggle for me. But the, the turning point, so imagine I did that all those years, but the major turning point was when I was 17. And I found out like the biggest faith healer at the time, which I'll, without mentioning this person's name, right. was in Anaheim, California. <laughs> and uh, so well, I was like, there you go. And I was yeah. telling my friends, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go to this crusade and I'm going to come back with two hands. And I told my friends that, like my non-Christian friends, to try to um, like witness to them, you know, as like a right. testimony to believe in my faith and stuff and so i went to this crusade nothing was happening uh, i was getting really discouraged and i told my friends like oh take me down to the stage dude maybe you know when the guy lays hands on me something's gonna sneak and happen like he'll lay hands on me and he's anointed boom you know You're right tried going down place was packed thousands of people he said come back tomorrow i was like ah oh, crap dude like i was embarrassed first of all but uh, at the same time of course i was hurt you know yeah. i was really disappointed went back the next day Obviously, nothing happened. And so that became a major turning point for me, dude, because it wasn't that I became bitter towards God the way I understood God at the time, but it was more of a, a realization for me at that time of like, oh, maybe this stuff doesn't really happen today. You know, because it's like growing up as a charismatic Christian, I never saw fingers grow <laughs> or, or missing legs or arms grow out. Like right. I remember going to church and people speaking in tongues and falling down. But I'm like, what's, what's kind of supernatural about that now? Like I was really questioning everything like it was very I, I did a lot of introspection you know just like wondering if if, if I was lied to if I was deceived because mm -hmm. uh, there was just a lot of bold claims but there was not much that I was seeing and so at that same time when I didn't get healed and I started questioning things I found out that one of my teachers at school was a Christian apologist and are you familiar with that term apologetic stuff no let's ex let's talk about it it's just explaining okay. a little bit yeah yeah so so my teacher was an apologist. I had no clue what an apologist was when I was yeah. 17, but basically it's somebody who defends something. So there's other religions that have their apologists, but mine was within the context of Christian apologetics, which is how to defend the Christian faith. So that was right. a whole okay. new world to me, that, yeah. because look at me who, when I was a kid, I believed everything, dude. I mean, when there's a guy coming from another country claiming to do miracles, I believed it. Oh, lay hands on me. I, I did right. that for all my life as a kid. Now, all of a sudden, this teacher started telling me to start questioning things. And I'm like, oh, that's true. You know, like, uh, well, how do I know this stuff is really true? <laughs> you know, and, and I'll be honest, like, I, I did assume Christianity was true the whole time. 
Right. It's not like it messed up my faith. It was more of um, I just wanted to have good reasons why I was a Christian. And so I immersed myself in that world of academia and intellectual Christianity when I was 17. Like it totally changed my world where I became super, super skeptical. And right. so it was kind of like a double edged sword for me, Brian, because in a way it was good because there was some skepticism there. So it's not like I'm going to these crusades and be like, I believe now, I believe everything this guy says. Now it's like, uh, no, you know, this guy might be fooling us. He might be a charlatan just trying to take your money, or maybe he's just delusional too. Who right. knows? But it was a double edged sword for me in the sense that I was skeptical of everything. Like I didn't believe anything for eight years. And when I say that I didn't believe, I really didn't believe. Like you could ask my closest friends, you could ask my family. I had an agenda <laughs> for eight years to expose the charismatic faith healing movement. Like that was my passion, believe it or not. Right. And so I did that where I started to even preach at churches about that stuff. I would guest speak at churches, talking against the miraculous. I mean, how ironic is that? But people <laughs> were cool with that. But it was more of the conservative churches, right? And so right. I was doing that. And within that, eight, after eight years of, of, of speaking against the quote-unquote supernatural, and I say quote-unquote because I think it's a misnomer, but um, basically at that time, unexpectedly in my life, I had a serious back injury. And as you read in my book, right? Like right. I was a break dancer. <laughs> so I did that my whole life ever since I was in elementary school, despite my hand, I can do it. Right. But um, I was at a party and my back just went out and uh, it's crazy because I never really had any back problems. And it's weird because it's really bad, but I didn't, I wasn't the type to really stretch when I break dance. Like I didn't do it that much. And just one day, boom, it just, it just popped. Yeah, like it was really bad yeah. at a party. I'm like, what is this, dude? And everything below my my waist just got super heavy and numb. And uh, long story short, with that part, I end up, ended up having what's called a herniated disc and sciatica. Right. And so, like for your audience, like who do, they're not aware of how that works, it's just like you think of your spine in between each vertebrae um, are your disc, and it just basically gets crushed, and it like it slips out, it pops out or bulges out, and then it kind of touches a nerve and it shoots down. Hurts, and it hurts man. like hell. It hurts yeah. like hell, dude. I mean, like, oh, man. It's like every time I sneeze, it hurts. Like, it shoots every time I cough, every time I laugh, and I laugh a lot. I mean, I would cry myself to sleep almost every night because I'm like, what happened? Like, I can't even walk. Yeah. Honestly, bro, I can't even walk normally. It's you know? bad. Yeah, it's rough. I can't even, so I would literally be the type of guy in my early 20s where I had to hold on to rails, like, everywhere that I went. Mm -hmm. And even this was in college and, you know, Everyone's telling me, get a wheelchair, get a wheelchair. People in school would be praying for me because I went to a private university at the time and none of the prayers were working. Um, and not too long after that, things just went for the worse where um, I had this really strong uh, chest uh, pain in my chest. Like it was really bad at a friend's house late at night. And, um, and you wrote about that too. Yeah, yeah, I felt like it was a heart attack. And um, I found out eventually, like I, I literally thought I was going to die at that moment. I was like confessing my sins and everything. <laughs> and honestly, dude, it was like scary. <laughs> and then uh, it was a stupid thing that I did where I decided to just uh, endure the pain and just sleep it off. I just knocked out. But then eventually I went to the hospital. They said that I was diagnosed with something called GERD, which is gastroesophageal reflux disease. I had no clue what GERD was at the time. Never even right. heard of the term. Um, and they said that I had an extreme, extreme form of it, which made it even scarier for me. Because um, from that point on, Brian, like I literally had uh, chest pain, heartburn, and vomit taste in my mouth. Pretty with much the back pain, pain at the same time. With the back pain at the same time. Right. And it's crazy because I'm, I'm not even joking. Prior to that really bad attack in my chest, I don't ever remember having heartburn. Like if, if I ever did, it must have been so subtle that I don't even remember. But I right. there was never like a buildup to it. So. It just hit me like that. I was like, what's going on? <laughs> like these two major things in my life. You know, I'm not even thinking about my hand anymore. It's like I've accepted it as a skeptic. I don't believe in that kind of quote unquote right. supernatural stuff. And um, then what happened, I, I, I did physical therapy. I had a bunch of Asian friends tell me, do acupuncture at work. So I did that. I did a stick at work. And I was just getting worse. Literally, I was just getting worse and worse. Mm -hmm. All the exercises I was doing, changing my diet, just eating Subway or whatever, like nothing was working. And give me like a little candy, like a lifesaver. I'm like screwed up the entire day. So you can just imagine, um, I really was wondering why is my life falling apart at such a young age? And I was serving at a church as a pastor. So, you know, you kind of question like, 
I don't really deserve this. I mean, I'm, I'm like, I'm doing good. You know, why did, why is this happening right. to me? And um, so what happened was that another turning point happened. And this was back in 2006, which really changed my life. Now, this mm -hmm. isn't in my book because this is going to be possibly in a future book. But my life changed when I met this guy. Um, his name is William Beeson. And he was sharing mm -hmm. his story about how he was, he would say, is miraculously healed. And remember, at that time, I don't believe anything. None of that stuff. It's right. all BS to me. I've even heard like resurrection stories during my skeptical period. I'm like, come on, man. That would be all over the news, you know? So right. like nothing. And, but I'm hearing this guy. There I am in my pain listening to this guy's story. They called him like a modern day Job. And for your listeners, Job was a person in the Old Testament, whether he's real or not. It was a story about a guy who just suffered a lot, right? And right. They call this guy a modern day Job. Willie Beeson's had a surgery of basically his back, the disc in his spine ruptured, which eventually he had to get uh, surgery for it, obviously. He had five surgeries. When you have one surgery, you're never the same. So he had five. Right. He had to get two more, a total of seven. He had no blood flow in his left leg. It was going to get amputated. He was super, super skinny um, after his, uh, all these things started happening to him. And before, he was this really big, bulky guy. So it was like his life was going downhill family problems his business started you know going down and everything so his life right. was like a living hell obviously so i'm listening to this guy's story very open in a way um i don't know i guess i was just desperate at that time and he eventually goes to a church where they have a healing service and he goes to this church to get prayed for just for his wife because he doesn't really believe in this stuff he didn't expect much but he did it for the sake of his wife he just wanted to die and he was depressed. He heard a voice, literally just heard a voice somewhere. I guess it was like around his head or whatever, saying, you are not going to die. And then he was sharing that when he heard that voice, he knew it wasn't the faith healer because a faith healer had a very thick Korean accent. And that voice yeah. really just came out of nowhere. But he says, when he heard that voice, he got, he got more depressed because, okay, he's not going to die. But that means he's going to live in this sick body the rest of his life. I mean, he was better in 22 hours a day. You know, right. he just like passes out. So it's really bad. So he goes home, starts writing in his journal. All of a sudden, he feels a strong wind come into the room or like a sound of a wind, something like that. He all of a sudden gets like taken up and ends up in what he would describe as like a heavenly place. Mm -hmm. He meets a figure who supposedly is Jesus. And this Jesus figure tells Willie, you are going to be 100% healed, restored to your youth. Boom, comes back to his body. 100% healed, dude. 100% healed. Instantaneous. Oh, uh, no. So right uh, over time. This is where I'm skipping the details, right? Right, so, uh, right, right. No, it's, this is, if you want the details, so this is what happened. He goes to sleep. I mean, he comes back to his body. He's like, what was that? And he tells us why. Yeah. The wife's like, you're on too much morphine or whatever, you know? <laughs> and then uh, he, he writes it all down, goes to sleep, wakes up the next day. He says, I stood up, no pain. That was already a miracle. I walked a little bit, no pain. He runs like a sneaking mile or something. No pain. That's how he found out he was wow. healed. And then he started screaming, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. And I think he said, God is real, God is real. I'm not sure, but I remember he said, God is, I'm healed. Right. So he shares that story, talking about the power of God, you know. And there I was just listening to him and open. And so I approached him and I was like, hey, Willie, um, I just told him about my back. And I, uh, we swapped information. We actually became really good friends, you know, mm -hmm. really dope, very kind guy, very monotone guy and not showy at all, which is what I like. And he brought in all the doc he brought in documentation from like UCLA, uh, Germany. So that kind of gave him more credibility to me. Plus, he has an atheist friend who was still an atheist that was a witness of his healing. <laughs> He's like, I don't know how to explain right. what happened to my friend Willie. So like that, that just gave a lot of credibility uh, for, to me, for him. And so he says, all right, Josh, give me your email. Here's, um, then he sends me a, a link to a website and it's that church, that church where he got prayed for, you know, and I, I saw it. I was like, you can imagine me rolling my eyes. I'm like, ah, oh, this is that dude. It's that charismatic stuff, you know? Right. And, then, uh, <laughs> and so, so I saw the testimonies of there, of their healing service. Um, there were people who were getting healed of like headaches. I'm like, ah, I'm like, whatever, you know, and then back pain. I'm like, ah, whatever. Still a little skeptical, psychosomatic. And then cancer was being healed. I was like, well, that's, that's true. That is a big deal, you know. And then mm -hmm. there was one testimony of an arm that was supposedly like lengthened or grew. I'm like, what? And I've never heard of something like that before. Like a testimony right. that's kind of weird. Like, what does that mean? It was it a whole arm or like was grown out or like a little arm or lengthened? What does that mean? So 
at that moment, Brian, it's hard to explain, but I was ex- there was this huge rush rush of emotion that I had where I was extremely, 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 extremely confused at that very moment. And I, I shut the computer and I went to the prayer chapel at my school and I just started bawling. I just started crying. Of course. I can I I understand thinking, completely. Yeah, yeah. Just like for the first time after eight years of being a skeptic and preaching against this stuff, like my desire to be healed came back. Mm-hmm. And then I started talking to people about it. And even the professors at my school, and they were like kind of scared for me because they know about my story. I was very outspoken at right. beginning classes. I'm always sharing my opinion and stuff. And, and they're like, Josh, what if that thing happens to you like when you were 17 at that crusade? I was like, and then just where I was mad. I was like, why would God do this to me again? You know, why would right. he let me see this website and meet this guy just to hurt me again? Like that was just <clears> how, what was coming out of me. I was right. very emotional <laughs> and try to condense this all, bro. And all of a sudden, um, I decided to look into it again, to investigate. And so I had this renewed interest in healing, but this time with, with a different perspective where instead of looking at all the guys that I grew up with, I were all, you know, they were on Christian television you know, with the funky hair and asking for money, I found out about these other people who were intellectuals, who were former skeptics, who were teachers, you know, speakers at like these other seminaries that were uh, full-on believers in healing and the miraculous or the mm-hmm. continuation of the, the gifts of the Spirit, we would call it. And I started traveling from place to place, meeting these people, you know, Mm -hmm. because I was just so hungry. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's this whole other world of people that they seem like normal people. You know, they don't say like, let's say the Lord. They don't talk like that. You know, they just look like normal, chill people. And (laughs) I started doing healing myself. And for the first time, I started to see results like immediately. Like we started doing healing and someone had a cast on, pain went away right away and took off the cast and you know just random things that started off small just with like pains and you know just going everywhere i was like super passionate about it you know i was like what's going on and uh what happened to me with my body is that long story short with that one is that my my back's good normal and my GERD is completely gone like completely gone 100 percent. that's you know i wrote that book several years ago that you read it's still the same dude i just had a monster energy drink now people will knock me down for this because they're they're good but i just had a monster energy drink energy drink last night like at two or three in the morning (laughs) you know i say and and and, you know to each his own i'm just saying that my body for sure has changed you know right so i'm not telling people to eat the way that i eat but the way that i eat now if you see my old photos back in the day, Brian, if you just scroll through my Facebook, I look very different. I actually looked more unhealthy back then when I was younger, <laughs> believe right. it or not. You know, it's my birthday this week, by the way. You know oh, happy so birthday, I'm, man. Yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so I'm getting older and right. I feel younger. I feel younger. I, I, feel I totally get that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, um, Absolutely. Do you I, think I that to, there's a part of yourself deep down that put you through this so that you would come to the realization that you're at? yeah I believe like, so. th- that you went on yeah. this journey for a reason like while you're going through it you don't realize if i didn't go through this i wouldn't have all these wonderful things happen later on you yeah, know 100%. people that are struggling yeah. right now sometimes have to have their perspective look at joshua sometimes what you're going through kind of gives you these realizations right. later on right. you wouldn't have had if you hadn't have gone through that right you wouldn't have gone to that church you wouldn't have sought oh, out yeah. those healings you yeah. so there's no, no, no. I mean, that, that's, I think, the beautiful part of life, right? Is like, you know, Steve Jobs says, is like, you connect, you don't connect the dots moving forward, you connect it looking backward. Right. As a kid, when you're going through the pain, you don't see things clearly because it right. just hurts too much, you know? And as I got older, obviously, and who would have thought that the guy who was so adam or so vocal about against healing <laughs> would have been healed? Who does healing? Yeah. Gets healed and starts teaching on healing. I would have been the last person to trust me. My family knows this. My closest friends know this. They even, in fact, I was so vocal about it. My closest friends were actually mad at me because they were confused when I started to shift. And like, you're the one that told us not to believe in this stuff. Like, right. And I'm sure there's literally. a part of you that was a little bit hesitant to speak out because you had been the opposite, right? You were like, there's that little part of you that said, I don't, I realize the contradiction, but I'm going to contradict myself. I, I yeah, get yeah, yeah. I've been there. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, because I contradict myself with my channel a lot. I'm saying stuff yeah. that I, I have preached against in the past, you know? Yeah. yeah. So there you go. It's like that, that's something where, it, of course, it would cross my mind, but I'm a very, like, when I'm passionate about something, I just go for it, even if it kind of makes people uncomfortable. I'll just right. share it because it changed my life. And that's one of the reasons why I eventually left my church because at that time, since I was a skeptic, I was part of this very 
conservative Southern Baptist church. And I told my pastor what happened to me. He saw what happened to me. Right. And I said, pastor, um, I'm getting criticized at church because a lot of the people at church are into apologetics. So they're very aware of like faith healers and they're very critical of that. And here I am, one of the pastors here. I want to preach on healing, pastor. And my pastor said, Josh, you preach from your heart. And so I went full on like every single right. week and you could see the eyes in the audience. So the young people loved it, but the old people, <laughs> they weren't having it. They're like, you're right. trying to be like that guy on television and blah, blah, blah. Right. Like, no, nah, this, this changed my life. I got healed and blah, blah, blah. And so that was like a big struggle for me where I became churchless for quite some time. And I eventually yeah. left the ministry because I just felt like I couldn't fit in. And so I just started to uh, roll with other ministries and learn from them and i started to have these experiences of what we would call you know outside the religious realm uh, we would say like paranormal stuff or right. uh, just know things about people that were like specific and had some out-of-body experiences just random out-of-body experiences and yeah things like that and so it really really changed my life brian i know you have a lot of questions so no 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 that, i that's... love it thank you so much <laughs> uh, what when i when i watch your channel and read your books you know, I, I've met a lot of people that talk about the law of attraction. Um, and there's certain levels of like law of attraction. There, there's somebody that's kind of given me the, the version of the secret. And then there's somebody that's uh, been through it and it's kind of an advanced level of law of attraction. I see that with you. you you've, you've taken it. You realize that the full implications. So you obviously experienced this, you've been through it, you've yeah. tested it out. So do you understand what I'm saying? Like you uh, can tell when somebody has, realized the law of attraction and then started to apply it and over time there's so much more detail and nuance and flavor to yeah, the law of attraction sure. and that's yeah, what yeah. with your teachings i mean you, you've taken it to level anything you focus on grows even very small distinct levels and so i've learned a lot about the law of attraction yeah, from you awesome. thinking that i'd known it all but no and so i want to talk about a little bit of your book sure. um, the secret of awesomeness talks a little bit about it so so when did you start really applying and exploring the law of attraction after you left the church or was it during that yeah. time or when, when was yeah. it? So here's, here's what's interesting. Just kind of looking back and reflecting on my life, right? If I were to filter it, like I didn't know that my Christianity of the supernatural stuff was actually law of attraction. It's right. just completely different lingo because when you look at our teachings back in the day as a Christian, I don't mm -hmm. identify, self, identify myself with any particular religion, just for your audience to be right, aware right. of that. But um, I was part of the, the kind of Christianity that's called a word of faith movement. That's kind of like to some people, it's like a fringe group, you know, but we were the ones that were talking about like health and wealth and prosperity and healing and all those kinds of things that, you know, um, some charismatics are, are not even to some of uh, with some of that kind of uh, emphasis within the faith. And, but we did talk about like speaking things into existence. We right. did talk about naming it and claiming it. And that was like a famous one that I used to hear when we were, you name it and you claim it in Jesus name, <laughs> you know, things like that. Right. We did talk about you speak things that are not as though they were That's like law of attraction, you know? Right. And so when I, when I got, when I became skeptical, of course I put all of that aside. When I started to explore spirituality, law of attraction, all kinds of things. I was hearing stuff about resonance, vibration, attraction, resistance, all those types of things. But then when I started to look at it and kind of compare it with what I was learning as a kid, it's like, oh, no, it's, it's, it's similar. It's just the semantics. It's just a different language that we, we don't talk about vibration. Right. We talk about Holy Spirit, man. We don't talk about energy. We talk about Holy Spirit's come upon you because I've seen people, you know, have energy and feel all that stuff when I was yeah. a kid. I, I felt all that stuff when I was a kid, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and seeing things happen where like my own back, when my back was healed and my girds was disappeared, I still was identifying myself as a Christian healer. And right. I didn't know much about like, um, the law of attraction stuff. You know, that still was kind of new agey for me, <laughs> believe it or not at that right. time, you know? Um, and then I realized once I started to learn more about the secret back in the day, I'm like, Oh no, it's just, it's just the lingo, dude. It's, it's the right. same thing, the same uh, process. Well, I mean, it's yeah. a law. So every religion yeah. is going to grab onto those laws and, and kind of form it and make it a, a part of their own Pretty much, uh, yeah. in a lot of ways. Uh, yeah. But but what I find, and I, I think maybe you have found, after you kind of like move away from Christianity a little bit, that part of yeah. you, and you realize Christ was like the best law of attraction teacher 
you know, when you go back and look at what he was, the dude was a master, you know? Ah, yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know, yeah, people yeah, have sure. tried to attach all other stuff with what he said, but really he was just like, hey, you can have anything you want. All you got to do is this. Oh, yeah, and everybody tried to, it. you know, you know, create something else out of it. But if you want to know one of the best law of attraction teachers, it was Christ, right? Jesus, oh, yeah. right? He was sure. awesome, he, he, right? He demonstrated it. I mean, exactly. like he, he, he healed people. I mean, his words were powerful. Look at the influence that he has even to this day. Yeah. I mean, I, I look at it even at my own life of where, you know, it's true. Like if I'll be honest, bro, like if I didn't get healed of my back and of my girds, who knows where I'd be when it comes to the topic of healing, because I, there's only so much reading that I can do, right? right? If I'm, if I'm reading like dozens of books, I'm meeting all these people who claim to be healers and I'm going from conference, conference to conference, unless I experienced it myself, I don't think I'd be as confident as I am now. So the reason why I feel like I have some confidence with this is because I've seen it in my own life, it's not right. just like, oh, I heard this, I heard that, which is fine. But for me, I needed to know, especially because of the pain that I've been through and my skepticism that I've had for so many years, that was really hard for me to get out of for a while, you know, right. um, I really needed to see something. And it was through a person's story that kind of catapulted me, you know, to kind of explore it. And then it led to my own healing, which yeah. really changed my life, bro. My healing changed. That's why I didn't give a rip when people were criticizing me saying this stuff is like culture because you already knew i already knew yeah. and it wasn't making me a bad person either you know it was like making me a better person and helping me to understand that hey you, you don't always have to just tell people that you'll be healed in heaven you know like we were giving people a, an opportunity to try to get better and you know we've right. been able to see that the past for several years so in your channel, um, in, in your book, you've also had some interviews. You, you do explore the quantum nature and you look yeah. into the quantum physics part of your book, you know? Yeah. And so uh, there's definitely, um, if, for, the, for the skeptic, you're not just, this is not just a spiritual thing. There's, yeah. there's science behind what we're talking about. And we're, sure. you're touching upon that in your book, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I believe so. I mean, I'm not a quantum physicist, but just right, from right. my understanding, from my reading, uh, seems to be that science is there's there's an explanation that they have for some of these things obviously there's other things that they're very they don't understand like stuff when it comes to the afterlife but when it right. comes to like law of attraction i mean you'll have guys like dispenza Braden, all these dudes that are combining spirituality and science together showing that they're not mutually exclusive and so I write it in my book. I just do it in kind of like a chill and in a fun way. Right. You know, based by the title, right? And I can't recommend it enough. Anybody out Thank there, you. if you want to um, read a book that, that really captures all this stuff, check, yeah. the, check both of those out. Yeah. Uh, so, so then, so at some point along the way, uh, you found Neville Goddard and you got some yeah. really interesting videos. Um, as with mine, I didn't start talking about Neville on my channel as much, but um, we were both kind of at a similar point. I, I don't claim to be an expert. You know, yeah. I'm still exploring Neville Goddard, oh, um, but it resonates with me. The, yeah, the, same the, here. It re that's why I'm finding it interesting. Um, yeah. And so uh, just talk to a little bit about some of this. You've, you, you've uh, adopted some of his techniques and, and just wanted yeah. to get your perspective of, of how Neville might have, you know, improved upon what you'd sure. already been through. Yeah, Neville, Neville is amazing, dude. Honestly, it's yeah. like, yeah, I... <laughs> dude just stumbling upon his work years ago because i did reference it in my second book right? right so i was already aware of neville at that time but it was only recently when i'm like really immersing myself in neville even though i heard of him from back in the day and but i was actually believe it or not i was actually using his techniques because um in a way the bible teaches it right so even as a right. christian like i said so if you were to ask me josh how did you get healed back in the day honestly what i did back in the day brian was that um almost every day or so, this is when I was in college, I would go to this one church like super late at night. It's open like 24 hours. So there's right. like people there like at two or three in the morning on their knees crying and praying. I'm like, dude, these guys are like hardcore, you know? And I would go there and I was praying for my healing for my back and for my girds. And what I would do is, is that because faith, you know, it's, we talk about faith in the Bible as you believe that you received it and it'll be yours. And so what I would do at that time is that I would visualize myself running i would visualize visualize myself right. eating the things that i want to eat like chips and chocolate and all those kinds of things and i don't know anything about neville i didn't read new thought metaphysical books at all it's just the stuff that i learned within charismatic kind of supernatural christianity and what would happen is that since it was so late at night and i would go to these churches i would knock out <laughs> i'm just like there in the pew and then i would just knock out right. and of course so you know you... we learned about neville's thing it's a whole you know a state akin to sleep thing where you're doing this as you're knocking out in the hypnotic right. state and so, yeah. And so when I found Neville's stuff, 
it really resonated with me and it put it in more of like a teaching form and how I could like teach it to other people. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Neville is a man. I mean, he's like his, his interpretations is very different <laughs> than how I grew up learning since he looks at the Bible as more of a, you know, psychological states that you're moving through and mm-hmm. these characters are not necessarily historical, but I, I'm so grateful for his life and for the legacy that he left for all of us, dude, just yeah. really impacting my life even to this day. So you have some pretty cool um, videos, some different, te- one of the, one of the ones that I um, learned from you is the, is the mirror technique. Uh, oh, okay. y- yeah. You, you talk about it in your book and you have some videos yeah. on it. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that. You, you, um, and, and, when I started using it, you, I was like, you know, Josh was right. This, this stuff worked. Neville talks about it a little bit, but you kind of expand on it. So yeah, let's talk yeah. about the, the, the mirror technique that, that you. Sure, sure. Yeah, so the mirror technique is basically that. So you're, you're looking in the mirror and basically you speak to yourself. You look straight into your eyes. And as we always hear the saying is that when you look into a person's eyes, it's like looking into their soul. And so ultimately, right, we're trying to reprogram the subconscious mind. When you're speaking, you want to you, you want to speak things in a way into existence, mm-hmm. and you want to speak it as though it's already in the present state. So you're like, I am this, I am that, and we just found it very powerful. Where I have a lot of testimonies even coming in pretty much every day, especially because of YouTube, people commenting, people just crying. It's like they've never taken the time to look at themselves, and yeah, say I love you, or I am loved. Mm -hmm. or you know everything's working out okay like they just they just need to look at themselves and it just has like an emotional response coming from within just like it's not just like some random affirmation you know what i'm saying they're looking at themselves (laughs) yeah they're like it's much more powerful yeah Yeah, they're like looking into their soul and when you're able to now you say to look in your left eye right Oh, did I say that? <laughs> do you look at both eyes, or is oh, it yeah, one? yeah, because you can't you can't really look at both eyes. So, right, so you look at one eye. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I probably did say that. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I guess the point was just look into your eyes, right? And speak to your soul. There's like no rush, and you just speak your truth, whatever it is. You know that you're loved. You're 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 enough. I am enough, and you always want to speak it in the present tense, not in the future tense, which is. Um, which makes sense with a lot of stuff that we're teaching about reality creation is always in the present moment. So, right. Yeah, cool. Now, one thing that that's um, interesting to discuss in the law of attraction community is once you start to game plan this out and how our thoughts create reality, then there, then there's these outside influences where, you know, Neville talks about taking a mental diet and, mm-hmm. and um, how do you access the news? We especially living in another country, you got politics, all these things. Yeah. especially the, with, with our phones, we can just get sucked into these memes and groups and ideas that kind of pendulums, pull. pendulums, there pendulums. Is. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, in, in reality, transurfing that, that, yeah. that is this idea of pendulums the, and yeah. they treat it like it's almost a living thing. It's right. not necessarily uh-huh. conscious, but all it wants to do is pull your energy. It's just an right. energy. Right. So we give our energy to it, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Have, have you noticed this and have you found any, and what's your, interpretation of that and um have you figured out any strategies around you know how do we deal with the news and wh- how do we deal with these outside influences um so it doesn't pull our energy away because clearly yeah. it starts to become important when every thought becomes important yeah right so so i guess for the most part this is just on how i deal with things like for the most part i just ignore it now to someone they'll be like dude how stupid is that you got to be realistic right. you got to watch yeah. the news and this and that for me, I don't. I don't watch. Actually, I don't watch any television at all in the Philippines except Netflix. You know, but I mean, I don't watch like the Filipino channels or shows or right. all the stuff that's going on. If if there is quote unquote bad news that's going on, I don't put too much attention to it. I mean, even with the incident that just happened in the Philippines a while ago, it's like the more you you try to fight something or the more awareness you put on something, I feel like the more it's going to start to start to affect you in whatever way, whether it's um, emotional or mental. And right. so I tend to ignore those types of things because I was in the States not too long ago and I was just like chilling with my dad because, you know, my dad likes to watch a lot of TV. And when I was watching TV with my dad and I'm telling you, I don't watch TV really at all. I don't watch news. I was like, dude, this is all negative stuff. It's dude. all bad news. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm like, wow. Bad just, news. How right. do you feel good about this stuff? And so for me, for the most, I just focus on my world, you know, and, and hopefully that starts to bring a shift to, the people that are around me, you know, but of course, you know, I'll pop on, I'll go online and find out, find some stuff that's going on in the world today. But I don't, I try not to put too much attention to it or too much awareness to it where 
at least to the I, I try to be detached from it. You know what I'm saying? Or right. I, I, you know, so if I if I watch a, a horror movie, you know, I, I like horror movies. We watched one the other day. Um, I just tell my wife, yeah, just when you watch something, just don't be so attached to it. Just be kind of dispassionate towards it. And it's like, yeah, just be chill. Just just watch it. Just observe it. You know what I'm saying? And so for me, I just look at life in a very in a way kind of neutral way, where I just try not to absorb too much, even whether if it's really good or quote unquote really bad. I right. just try to observe it. You know, just like that whole thing of importance and all those kinds of things and just trying to stay chill, <laughs> at least for the most part. Yeah. So uh, once you kind of go down the rabbit hole of Neville Goddard and, and, and yeah. Love Attraction, uh, one, people, one thing people have a hard time with is recreating a feeling they've never had. Yeah. So I always like to ask an expert, what's, how do I, re- if I want to know the feeling of the billionaire, yeah. You no. Know, how do I find that feeling? What techniques or, or shortcuts do you have to create feelings that yeah. we have not experienced yet? Yeah, yeah. Do you understand so, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So obviously, it's like how how could a quote unquote poor person feel like a billionaire? Well, with, within that state, you can't, <laughs> right? Because it feels right. so far away. And this is where I think Neville is gold. This is where. He does talk about the human imagination as something so powerful since God is your human imagination. I'm just speaking from my own experience. When I imagine things, I, it just starts to naturally happen to me, honestly. Like the feelings happen where I start to catch myself smiling, right? So I, I was even like imagining this interview and your reaction of the interview and how it's going to make me feel after this interview. And, right. like that. and I start to notice that unless I imagine, um, I wouldn't have been able to create those types of feelings. If I just try to like, you know, for something to happen, obviously you, you can't like, how, how the hell do you become like a feeling like a billionaire? But what does a billionaire look like? What does a billionaire feel like? Well, if you don't feel like it, this is where you imagine. This is where you go within and you, and you play around with, with what you can <laughs> create in your mind. And that's just for me. There's no like particular, this is the right way to do it. Do I mean, there's a lot stuff of stuff in your body. Like, do you I have do. in your yeah. stomach, like your cheeks? Do you feel like uh, kinesthetic? sensations are you able to recreate yeah. specific kinds yeah sometimes so so my body i'm very like for myself i'm very sensitive to like energy so i feel stuff all the time you right. know? so even like when you know I, I started reading stuff about the plate and all that stuff back in the day and i'm just oh yeah i feel that stuff on my back and um mm-hmm. so even before i start reading about that stuff so like for me i do not all the time um but i i do tend to feel the emotion where i i always catch myself smiling like that's how it's like a good sign for me when i'm just oh, okay. like so envisioning things. You, you heard of the plate <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I mean I'm, not, I'm not an expert in this. Right, though. right. Neither um, am I. I, I. But I want to ask every one of my the people I talk to because I think yeah. I might compile these together. Um, yeah. it's, it's just an interesting thing. I, I want what What is your impression? Do you think that the plate exists? Do you use the plate? Do you activate it? Yeah, you people know, honestly, not, people that don't know that are watching this for the first time, there's a theory that there's an energy braid that's connected to the back somewhere in the back of our head that maybe extends down to our back that has some fundamental connection with states that we move into and, and may, may uh, have an influence on how we maneuver into future realities. Is that, that's the yeah. best way I can exp- yeah. describe yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. And so for, so for myself, do I use it? I haven't yet. It's just something that I've read about it. Right. I'm reading more on it. Um, I heard someone the other day mention that it's the same thing as a silver cord. That was kind of new for me. I'm very aware of the silver cord because of astral. Because of astral, right? So when you're yeah. when you ask, well, we'll get to astral projection in a second. Yeah. But sure. do you you are aware there's some kind of cord when you? Yeah, I'm, I'm aware of that, but I've right. never seen my own cord though. That's but the you irony. feel it. Yeah. I feel stuff in my back, I, right, but I don't okay. know what that is, though. Well, so, it, going to yeah. quantum physics, the stuff in our back is not observed, so it has kind of a wave like state it's like there's no way we can avoid it's always going to be it, it, there's more infinite possibility i don't know i'm, I'm getting too far yeah. you understand what I'm <laughs> right. yeah i mean there's a, there's a lot of stuff we, we observe about. something with us. our eyes yeah. it becomes yeah. manifest but behind yeah. us even if it's right behind us there's yeah. that yeah way. i mean like many times i feel buzzing in the back of my head um like something that's very common for me especially since i've been actually traveling for several years I, I, I hear like these frequencies, like it, it gets very loud. Like I'll just be chilling and I'm watching a movie with my wife. I'm like, Remy, you hear that? <laughs> and all of a sudden I hear so, it. It's like, it's like a musical tune. So and let's talk like, about astral projection. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when it started to become uh, easier for me was, was like you said, when I, it wasn't when I was listening to some binaural beat, 
It was when yeah. I could hear that high pitched tone almost. Yeah. And and I st- would, would okay. It's not some um, tinnitus that I have in my ear, <laughs> right? It's okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to focus on that noise, and then there's a pop. Yeah, yeah, that was uh-huh. when I started. When it became more easier for me while awake in a cool. lucid moment, and so uh, you know, I've had some weird experiences and seen some unusual things, and maybe it's my imagination, maybe it's real. I wanted to know your impressions and how you talk about it in your book. So uh, it's always nice to be, meet a fellow astral traveler. <laughs> cool. I think yeah. it's totally fascinating. I think all of us, nobody can claim to be like an expert. No, 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 there's yeah. mystery to it, right? Yeah, there's a lot that I don't understand, dude. Like, right. what the hell was but that? <laughs> is, I've, I've even read like very smart, you know, scientists and businessmen that have written books about it. Um, it's, it, it, we're not crazy. Yeah, I, I, or we're all crazy. Who knows? Right? Or we're yeah, all crazy, think, right? Yeah, we're not. We're not crazy, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, you know, consciousness is not. It's not local, right? So you're able right. to go far beyond our our localized physical body. And so when I first did it, it was actually back in 2006, where it was very random, right? So at just that happened. time, I was yeah, I was just chilling in the library, and I saw. Actually, this wasn't an OBE just yet, but it was a prelude. I saw this really extremely bright light. I was fully conscious, fully awake, and I just saw this light shining on me. And I heard the, and I started uh, right. feeling this huge weight on my body, like I was getting electrocuted, which was extremely uncomfortable, but yet not painful. Mm-hmm. And I heard the ringing in my ear and all that, those kinds of things. And then it left, and then it came back like two more times. After that happened, I was like, "What? What was that? I, I don't know what that was." Because I don't. When I hear about near death experiences, I hear about people going to heaven. You know, I was like, what, what was right. that thing that just happened? So the vibrational stuff was completely like foreign to me. Not too long after that, it happened again in the library where I was lying down on a beanbag in one aisle of the library. All of a sudden, that vibrational stuff started happening to me. And boom, I popped out and I was in another aisle of the library. So that was my first out-of-body experience that I could recall of that, that I'm aware of. And it was very... Uh, dim but I saw it I saw the library I saw the aisle I was like what am I doing here I'm in another aisle you know then boom I went back to my body right years later is when I started to look back and and learn more about out-of-body travel because like I said I was only aware of near-death experiences I wasn't into astral travel that sounds like too new agey for me back in the right. day, right so when I learned about astral travel and how you could have these experiences without the near death part. <laughs> I just, I went all in, dude. This, this is just my personality. I think we're right. similar in that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let you know, let's go, man. Let's go. <laughs> <I> just <laughs> go all the way. <laughs> and then um, I, I was learning all these different techniques, reading all these books. And I'm like, all right, Remy, I'm going to add a body travel tonight. I'm like trying to speak it into reality. And nothing would happen <laughs> for like several right. months. And then finally, after a couple of months, boom, it happened, Brian. And uh, from that point on, it just got pretty easy for me at that time. And um, I would have it like several times a month or a week or even in, a, in one day. And just well, let's talk about your experience. Work. Have you seen anything um, on, in, that, you, that like, uh, is unusual on your, on your course, journeys? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've, I've seen it. I had one just recently the other day. You know, yeah. I had an experience where I was literally in the air and fully conscious, fully awake in the air, falling down from the sky. And I ended up in this place that looked like a medieval place, believe it or not. And yeah. I saw this person that was humanoid looking but yet they had like a this sounds so weird no no had like nothing's a, weird it's all weird. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like all science fiction <laughs> but they had like a tail and i was like right. oh that's it but they look human you know and i've had other this was just like last week dude and it was super clear super conscious the way that i am right now fully awake and right. um, i've had other places where i was in these environments that were in my opinion like otherworldly i don't know how to explain it where also like been on like a spaceship and things like that it just sounds kind of funny right to some people. i've yeah, had the ex- i've had the spaceship yeah. <laughs> i've had yeah. the other you know what may be another planet or another dimension right? yeah. i, I want to know there's a part of me that wants to go back to the it's sure. i wish that i could have the ability to go back to places oh, sometimes uh-huh. that's the only thing that sometimes it seems like i'm taken to places but I, Same here. I want to yeah. be able to revisit like, okay, I want to go explore that place I was at. And it's like, I don't have a choice. Maybe I'm uh, really up to that, you know? That, yeah. That's... I mean, I, I think in some ways I've had experiences where I, I was just kind of um, didn't feel like I could control it. Like I was just right. there and all of a sudden I'm taking somewhere else. Um, for the most part, I'm able to control what's going on once I'm at a particular location, but where I am at initially, I don't know how I get there. Obviously right. I was like, oh, what, 
I mean, now when you started, you felt you did you feel way more empathic the more you start doing the out of I don't know. I just felt like my empathy level the more I started traveling out of body is okay. like I became more sensitive to when I'm in it when I'm like if I'm in a party with like yeah, yeah. then I'm I'm feeling everybody's emotions. It's, maybe it's not related, but it felt like sure. it was magnified sure. once I started sure. doing that. I, you know, I'm just speaking from experience. For me, I didn't notice much of a change. Okay. Um, I think I've heard stories like that where people kind of became more psychic and stuff after their experiences. My stuff was happening more so when I started investigating the healing stuff back in 2006. Right. That's when all the stuff started happening. Um, as for the OBEs, when I would come back into my body, I didn't notice any difference, to be honest. But um, it made me more aware of the other realities that are, quote unquote, right. out there and um good reminders for for what i'm doing here right? so let's talk about a, a semi-controversial subject with in the neville community um okay it's the we it's human nature we 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 want to be loved and we want to be in a great relationship you know we want to find the okay. love in our life and so a lot of people are attracted to the neville goddard and they attach some of those teachings and they think oh i can go and in, in this one guy down the street or girl down the street and I can make that person love me. Um, and so I, I've been, I've been accused. You're you don't believe that I can manifest a specific person, Brian. I can't, I don't, I won't ever watch any of your stuff again. Well, I'm not right. saying that. <laughs> I don't know. Um, let's, let's discuss it because, um, can I, can I manifest a specific person? There's a beautiful girl down the street, man. I totally want to man. I want her to come over and we're going to have a great time. Uh, can I, can yeah. I use, can I manifest her to come over to my house? Yeah. You know, I think in general, right. If that's the way law of attraction works, it's something that you want. I, I, I say in a general sense, you can, right. but I, if I remember what Neville talks about, I, doesn't he keep it kind of broad of just, just thinking right. about in my, it more so being far, happy? He's yeah. saying the state is going to attract. The it's the yeah. state. Of being happily right. married. Right. And so it might be somebody else, but I think in general, you can, you can do things with anybody. Do it. Right. Yeah, with anybody pretty much. But I think in general, if I remember what Neville would say about it, it's more so of uh, being in a happily married state. And I guess it might not be the person that you end up wanting initially. Right. Am, I, am I correct? You, so I'm you, even were, you, you, yeah. you, you um, in a loving relationship when you moved to Philippines, yeah. you, um, um, but that was because more of a state, right? I believe so, yeah. I mean, I, that, just, I think that even makes sense for for how my wife and I met because believe it or not, I was like, I was single for a really long time, dude. I just, right. I didn't get caught up with a lot of relationships to be honest when I was growing up. And um, when I met my wife, it was at a time in the Philippines when this is a little bit controversial. So when I first came here, um, a lot of churches got pretty pissed off at me because a lot of people were coming to my gathering and hearing about who's this young guy uh, right. teaching people how to do healing and stuff. And I'm just like, dude, I'm not doing anything. These people are coming to my gatherings. I'm just teaching them. Next thing you know, I was, it was getting like, yeah, I, I was learning to just be content with my life in general with myself. I've been single for a long time. Right. I actually thought that I was going to meet a Filipina girl here, like my first year. <laughs> and and I, I did, I've met so many wonderful people. They're gorgeous people here, dude. And I just didn't fall for anybody, you know? And yeah. when I was hearing a lot of these negative things about me here from the mega churches here, believe it or not, the mega churches saying that I was like a cult leader and this and that. I was like, what? I'll be honest. I got a little bit paranoid. Of course. Little, right. Cause I was getting text messages from people from mega churches. And I was like, Oh, this is kind of cool, but kind of not, you know, I'm like, wow, they're, they're paying, you know, paying attention to what I'm doing and I'm not, you know, I'm just chilling and teaching. And it's like, you know what? I think I want to go back to um, the States. And I told some of my friends here that week. I'm like, I think I'm going to go back to America. Cause I just felt like I had more backup, so to speak. Right. And so I wasn't really thinking about um, getting a relationship anymore, you know, but mm -hmm. during the whole year, I was like, I'm excited to like meet people, you know, different mm -hmm. women and I just nothing happened. But that same week, bro, when I decided I'm going to go back to America and I didn't even do it, I met my wife. <laughs> and it's funny because right. my wife was very new to the Philippines, too, because she was only there for two weeks in the Philippines because her grandma passed away. And it was so random. She's like, All right, I got to go to the Philippines. My grandma passed away. I got to be there for my dad. And. So she came and we literally just met two weeks when she arrived and then we got together like right after two weeks after we met and then we got mm -hmm. married exactly a year later. So yeah, That's it's interesting. Awesome. It's like when I didn't put too much importance on, you know what I'm saying? Like right. my relationship and I just kind of just became chill about it. And I focused more on being the person that I would want to marry because I wanted right. someone who 
was secure, someone who was loving, someone who wasn't going to be codependent upon me, someone that's okay with what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? And so right. we resonate so much because her name, which is kind of funny, is Remedios, which means healing. You know, so I was like, oh, <laughs> wow. dude, I have to marry you. <laughs> no, Jay, you know? <laughs> uh, but it's, it's just interesting, you know, the irony of that. And when we met, we just clicked. And so that's a right. part, at least for myself, just to sound a little bit on the romantic side, it's like, I, I, we clicked so much, like I felt like I didn't know her. And after meeting all these other people throughout the whole year, my first year in the building, I just didn't connect with this you person. Didn't have that she feeling. Was chill. She wasn't all dressed up. She wasn't all, she didn't even wear any makeup, just a white shirt and jeans. And then I, I just fell for her right away. And we just, yeah. I just connected at a heart level. And, you know, we're still married to this day. And, We'll be celebrating our anniversary in a couple. That of is years. amazing. So, what yeah. what I'm what I'm proposing is that yeah, you can manifest a specific person, but if you focus hard on that person, then you create yeah. importance. You put them yeah. on a pedestal. If you yeah. just focus on yourself, being a loving focus person, the kind own. of person that yeah. you would want to be loved, and you see people along the way, you're going to manifest the right the universe is, or whatever. You yeah. are going to find yeah. somebody that's perfect for you. I believe so. And I, and I think um, this is where, you know, this, this whole debate with like law of attraction and trend surfing and all these things. I've, I've been hearing some of the dialogue about it and I'm just like, you know, it's just, it's just really semantics for me. It's semantics. Um, yeah. So it's like, you, we could say importance, you know, for us, what we talk about in law of attraction community, it's about when you're at a vibration of, of desperately wanting something, you're going to keep attracting that desperately exactly. wanting something, you know? So like when it comes to attracting things, that's what people have to realize. You don't necessarily always attract what you want, but you do attract what you are. It's what you're vibrating, right? And so if you exactly. are, are exemplifying a type of being, a person, a loving type of state of being, you're going to start to attract similar people, whether it's romantic or, or not, right. you know what I'm saying? And so I think the focus should be, yeah, you could try to attract so-and-so, don't place too much importance on it, but ultimately you want to focus on yourself. What are you, what's the type of person that you're becoming and you're going to start to attract those types of people into your life, so. Right. Which is why Abraham really does resonate when I listen to Abraham and I, all okay. of them, I don't find contradictions. I find here, yeah. commonalities in all of it. I Same think here, that, yeah. that, that's so what's handy, so exciting yeah. about it. So, um, <laughs> no, I'm good. I, I, that's cool, man. <laughs> right. When, um, and so that's what I see in yours. Your, your teachings are this cool, chill, way ba um, laid back way of, of explaining <laughs> a lot of this stuff um, in, in, a, in, a, in a comfortable manner. And that's what I'm saying. Everybody go and check out Joshua's channel because Thanks, you have man. some unique techniques. You, br you bring your own understanding of Neville Goddard. You explain the law of attraction. You actually have a course. Uh, yeah. Let me see if I have the exact link. It's Joshua-Tongle at think thinkific. Oh, you could just type in uh, joshuatongle.com slash course because it's like a little, like a shorter link that I've created. Um, and you have a discount that you're offering? Yeah, so there's a discount of $200 off. You just if put you that just in, to put save 200, uh, save 200 as the coupon code. Yep. Um, so, you know, I recommend everybody, if you want to go deep, Joshua is the place to go to go deep on this stuff. I recommend reading the book, Secret of Awesomeness. Uh, and uh, so you think, you know, those are some great and you really bring your own story to it. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, Appreciate that. Man. I know for sure that right now I'm going to, there's something that we're forgetting. You, one of the cool things about your, um, book is uh, you talk about how your know, money comes into your life you guys just kind of like you expect like you're talking about your when you you're getting married and you need oh, yeah. some money. <laughs> that yeah, story yeah, yeah. It was pretty yeah. crazy like you're uh you need some money to get married but you guys were like i know it's gonna come let's talk, I, I let's talk a little still, bit yeah. about that story yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so at the time right so we were, we were still missionaries at the time and if you know for people who are not familiar with the missionary lifestyle in general missionaries live off of like donations you know so you right, put out like right. a newsletter and whatever people give that's what you that's what you have and so i had like a donation button on my website back in the day and you know once in a while we get some money here and there but we were living off of that and i wanted to get married and i remember in fact, that's where the volcano erupted, bro. <laughs> it's, that, it's that location in uh, it's oh, called wow. Tagaita. Yeah, so that's actually where we got married, believe it or not. Amazing. And, so um, glad that you yeah. <laughs> thankfully, <laughs> yeah, thankfully, it's not during the eruption. Right. You know? And um, I remember we saw the venue, and it was beautiful because a good friend of ours at the time got married there, too. I was like, if, if they can do it, and this is what we want, why can't we have it? You right. know, why do we always have to feel like we got to, like, lowball ourselves and just feel like we can't afford it and so i was putting a lot of this stuff into practice i said like, let's do it it's like oh yeah but okay 
we have enough money for the down payment, but we don't have the rest of the cash. But like, but that's okay. This is where we just kind of like trust, right? We just kind of have quote unquote faith. So we, we had the down payment. We didn't have any of the, the rest of the money to come in yet. And we just acted as if we were going to get married on this particular day. And even as a, the day was approaching, I, you know, we were even sending out all the invitations already to our friends, even when we didn't have the cash for the rest of the money for the venue. Yeah. And then um, I think just like a, the week of our wedding, if I remember, it was like a Monday or something. I think we were getting married on a Saturday, something like that. And I remember we were going down the elevator and I was telling my wife, like, oh, you know how much money we have in the, the bank account, right? And it was, it was not a lot, bro, <laughs> right? And, and we just kind of like looked at each other going while we're going down the, the escalator. And we just, my wife's like, we'll be okay. And we smile. And it's cool, dude, because like we felt it. Like we didn't be like, all right, there's just a couple more days to the wedding. So let's kind of like save up and be a little bit more frugal. Like, no, we were just still like spending you whatever we had. Yeah, we didn't even, honestly, we didn't have a lot of money in the bank account. Honestly, yeah. but like whatever we have, we were still wanting to live in that abundant state of let's just be happy. And then about, was it the, the day before, I think, of, or the day of, the day before of our wedding day, then we got like several thousand dollars. It was like way more than enough of what we needed. And I just wanted to get emotional and just like, us oh, thinking works, you know? And it was just little things like that where that yeah, caught me a little bit, you know, sometimes you have your doubts here and there, right. especially as you're trying to practice these things. And um, it really change our lives just like learning the, the science behind it because this is something that my wife likes too with the stuff that we're we've been teaching and learning for the past several years is that back in the day we just held to the metaphysics of like the bible like scripture the bible mm -hmm. says this the bible says that speak those things that are not as though they were but then when we started learning stuff from like Braden and glipton and all these other dudes back in the day this was back in like 2011 i think it's like I was telling my wife, I'm like, you know what? It's just kind of, I feel just more confident with it though because there's like a mechanics to it. Because back in the day, it's just like, if it's God's will, but what if God's will is not what I want, you know? So it's kind right. of like always You're like always up in the air. Your yeah, will is God's like, will, right? Yeah, it was always like uh, up in the air for me, like as, as a Christian. And, and so kind of like learning the mechanics of it, that when you ask and you believe you receive it, it'll be yours. It's like, it, it, honestly, it gave us more confidence to, know that you can really get what you want in this life if you choose to if you choose it right? and i hope that people are they're watching this interview hear that message sometimes they may not have experienced it yet or they have and they didn't think about it when i when i hear your message it resounds with me another cool story was when you decided to move to the philippines oh yeah <laughs> crazy yeah, so, it is. <laughs> you know, people, hey, you just said, hey, I'm going to move. So let's talk about that story. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's that was a fun one because, I, you know, I'm born and raised in Cali, bro. <laughs> so right? As you can tell by the way that I talk. And yeah, exactly. I was always around, uh, you know, Filipinos and Koreans. And, and I'm like, you know, I, I have a heart just to go to the Philippines, just something different. I've, I've lived here my whole now, first, life. First, before you go, where, where did that come from? It just popped in? You were just like, I want to go? Yeah, I mean, there, there was like some people visiting from the Philippines and okay. they would tell me about some of the stuff that they're doing out there. It just sounded also exciting, just something right. kind of different, something to just kind of uh, give me something different in my life, bro, because um, I was already, like, I was graduating from seminary at that time and mm -hmm. I've spoken a lot throughout, actually throughout the United States, I was already speaking, but just, I, I wanted kind of a challenge to be honest and just to kind of venture off and, and just kind of see what what would happen and yeah. what so i got a little taste of it where i had a little trip to the philippines back in 2008 i was like you know before i because a lot of people were kind of discouraging me they're like you know joe when you go there you might struggle and i heard that so and so was only eating sardines every day like they would say stories <laughs> like that and i'm right. like making me feel like oh man i'm gonna suffer like, oh when you get there they're gonna steal they'll rip your earring out of your ear people will steal from you from the street i'm like oh my <laughs> god you know so i was hearing those kinds of stories of but course yeah from other people that live there they're like you know, they're saying all these wonderful things that are happening there. So I decided to, to go out here back in 2008 just for a short trip. I did a couple of speaking gigs. And then I was like, yeah, I think I want to come out, come out here and live here. And so I went back to the States and um, I remember just chilling in the library. And then someone just started talking to me. And it just honestly it just kind of came out of my mouth. I'm like, oh, I'm going to the Philippines. I was just like that. And I said it and I called myself like, oh, I just told someone that I'm going to the Philippines. And I got really happy about it, you know, and then. I started talking to a lot of people around campus. That's just something that I did. I like just chatting with people around the campus at school. And the more that I started talking about the Philippines, the, the happier and more excited that I got. And mm -hmm. um, I didn't have a lot of money at the time. You know, I, I was churchless. So I was really living off of like my speaking gigs and everything. And 
and I, I did have a car, but you know, it's like, I kind of wanted a challenge though. It's interesting because at that time, I think the blue book value was still around 10 G's, which isn't bad. If you convert it to Filipino peso money, it's like, Oh, right. that's a good start for me as a single guy. But it was weird at that time. I was like, you know what? I'm going to give my car away to my sister because that's just too easy for me. Now that sounds stupid to people, but, but there was a deep part I, of you when there was yeah. testing these laws. Yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to see what would happen. You know, like it, like how, what does it mean to like, trust and live by faith and make things happen so to speak and mm -hmm. so i did that i gave it to my sister i even told my sister i'll pay the car when uh, when i go to the philippines you i don't even know how but i told her that and uh i didn't have a place to live and then uh this millionaire guy heard me speak one day at this one mega church and he invited me to his office and i had like a little hunch like oh maybe he's gonna give me a little donation because he heard about me going to the philippines right. And then the first thing he says to me, he just has me sit down in front of him and he's like, so what are you going to do in the Philippines? And I started telling him, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to try to speak and help people. Where are you going to stay and live? I said, I don't know. He says, don't worry about it. I was like, what? He's like, don't worry about it. I said, what? What do you mean? He's like, I'll take care of where you, I'm going to take care of your housing for several years. I <laughs> automatically, bro. Automatically, I, I was crying. I was oh, bald. I can imagine. I, I it just shot imagine. out of my eyes, dude. And, and I'm like, are you serious? He's like, it's like, Josh, don't be surprised uh, by what God can do. Something like that. Uh, God's full of surprises, something like that. Very generous millionaire guy. You know, he has his products right. in Walmart and everything. <laughs> and then, um, so like one thing led to another, which is kind of telling me, yeah, I, I really want to go because it could work out. And eventually I found a home here that was in one of the nice villages here in the Philippines. And mm -hmm. I'm like, everything was just being taken care of. And um, just met a lot of awesome people, saw a lot of healings here. Um, just, I was just living out my dream. And so that's what I did. I, I just eventually stayed here for several years, met my wife and we moved back to the States for three years. We got our citizenship. We're like, dude, we like it back in the Philippines. Let's go back. And we came back. So we've been back for several years ago. I love it. You know? So, <laughs> you know, a lot of people out there, they, they're just one, one step away from living out their dream. Just, just yeah. one sentence away one you know one leap of faith and if you're doubting it look at joshua's story and joshua yeah. just you know that is an example um you took the that leap of faith you stepped yeah. out and walked on the water like neville it's talks about you know yeah. and it, and so sometimes just people need to hear that yeah. it works and so i just think that yeah. you're such a great example for everybody you. you know that needs that hope and keep on teaching I'll Thank keep on watching appreciate. every one of oh, your yeah. shows and then th th you. every one of your um, videos are awesome. And you. um, that. your, your stuff too, dude. I, I thank you. Man. Pump, you're pumping out podcasts like every minute, bro. <laughs> yeah. I was like, no, this hey, is bro, it's, <laughs> when you do it, when it's fun, it, when it's fun, that's, it's not a chore. It's fun. Yeah, Why yeah. Not? You know, I probably that's, do that's, need to hold back. I've been oh, no, told, no, no, hey. it's good. I was actually telling my wife, I was like, yeah, I'm going to be on this guy's show. I was telling this at dinner today and she's like, oh, who is it? I said, oh, it's that one guy. Cause I played your, I played a meditation of yours before. Uh -huh. And then she's like, oh, I like that. And then I said, yeah, it's that guy. She's like, oh, cool. I said, this guy, I said, Remy, this guy is just like me. Like we're, we're like really into the same it's things. True. We talk about the same thing. You know, believe it or not, like you don't see me putting out transurfing videos, but I've been into transurfing for a while. Right. I just don't talk about it yet. So that's something that's meant for the future because I'm still doing a Neville Goddard series. But like the topics that you have on your channel, bro, it's like, it's like honestly the best. Like I see your, well, thanks, I hear, man. Your, that means a lot. I hear your passion. I sense your humility of just being a learner, being a student, and just really wanting to help people. And you know, that's why when you're pumping all this stuff out, it's more so I'm just like laughing because it's because you love doing it. I could see it, and you I can think feel that's it. the best. It's the that best. was what I felt when I read your book. It was like I'm I'm listening to myself right now. <laughs> yeah, that's I, cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like it, like the, it, when you're talking about this, everything that you're saying, yeah. it's like I've said those exact words and gone through that. It, so, uh, so. It was awesome to meet you. It, next time you're yeah, in, in Cali, man, let's grab a bite to oh, eat. Oh, for sure. All right, yeah. let's do it for sure. For sure, um, I'll be so, there this year. So, all right, can't wait. So, <laughs> um, and so once again, Joshua Tongo, please check check his stuff out. And Thanks, Brian. Thank you so much. For sure, bro. Appreciate it. It was an honor. Thank you.